Hey everyone, Tim from Smart One Mastery here, and in today's video, I'm going to do a little overview and review of the uh, AC Infinity Cloud Plate uh, rack fans, so uh, stick around for that. All right, let's get started here. Um, as I mentioned, these are uh, AC Infinity Cloud Plates. This particular model is the T7-N. It has four 80mm uh, fans. Uh, it supposedly can move 50 to 220 CFM. You can see just regular 19 inch mount. Nothing uh, special there. Um, but you can see here for me, I have the, if you've seen any other videos here, uh, this is the Marantz uh, AV10. And then I have an Amp10 down here. I have the fan over top of each of them, but you can notice this is these things aren't quite 5U. So I added this little half U plate in here, right there. Sorry about the focus, to help with uh, the airflow. So these are aluminum, which is they're all uh, all made out of aluminum, which is kind of nice. So um, let's go over the settings here, and then I can show you the back. So there's essentially two modes. There's auto, this is the mode button, and smart. You can't really see that. There you go. So auto and smart, and then you'll notice there's a settings, alarm, speed, and buffer. So one of the things that, um, so I run mine in smart, and what that means is that um, the fans change speed depending on the, di the difference in the uh, settings temperature to the probe temperature. These do have probes, and again, I'll show you that in a second in the back. But um, one thing to note here, because this was confusing to me when I installed these. So again, I have mine in smart mode, and you can set the number of uh, fan speeds. And so this is going to kick in here. So, so you can see this is set for six right now, and you can change the number of different fan speeds, and then you can change the buffer. So when you're in, when you're in um, auto, all this, the, the, what, depending on what we have it set for speeds and then the setting, it, it works kind of like a regular thermostat. So this, um, when the probe temperature hits the settings temperature, the fans will kick into whatever speed you have them set for. And then um, they won't shut off until they go below the settings uh, temperature minus the buffer. So it has to drop two degrees before the fan shut off. In smart mode, it's a little different. So in smart mode, as I said, it changes the speed depending on the difference in temperature. And it uses the buffer to determine that, that difference. So um, as an example, I have my speed set at six. So I have that's the maximum too. You can only have up to six speeds, as you see. And so what that means is that um, the fans will kick in when the temperature is reaches the settings temperature uh, minus the number of speeds, which is six times a buffer, which is two, so that's 12 degrees. So in my instance here, I have it set at 95. Um, and my these fans will kick on to speed one when the probe temperature hits 83 degrees. And every two degrees it goes up above that, the fan jumps up to the next level. So it starts off at one. If it doesn't cool down, the temperature keeps going up and it reaches 85 degrees, it would jump up to speed two and so on, um, all the way up to the maximum of six. So that was a little confusing to me when I first did it because it was kicking on when I wasn't expecting it to because I had the setting set at, I think I can't remember what it was, 83, and the fans kept kicking on in the 70s. And so I finally figured out what they meant by that was depending on what you have set for the number of speeds and the buffer and the buffer you can change here too. And that um, goes in increments of two. So you can do two, four, six, and eight, I believe. So I just have it set at two. And then there's an alarm setting here, which if it doesn't cool down and it reaches that alarm setting, it keeps the fans at the maximum setting and it will put out an audible alarm every three seconds. 
So just a little bit of information there. I know that's confusing, but the, the, the smart setting is different, uses the buffer and the speed differently than the auto setting does. And so again, I, I've, uh, once I figured that out, um, everything is kicking on as it should. As I mentioned, I have two of these, one on the amp and one on the, um, AV10 and they do kick in. So these put off enough heat in normal use to, um, kick those fans in and it does bring the temperature down. As I mentioned right now, I have the, uh, these are, um, intake and I have my, uh, heat pump right over here. So that's my source of, you can see right there, that's my source of cooling in the room. Um, so I have behind this rack, which you've probably seen some of my other videos or you see here in a second, is I have actually a pretty good sized room back here. So, um, so far it's winter here still in the summer. I'm going to see what happens. I don't have an exhaust. I only have the intakes pulling the cool air in, but there's enough volume in the room back there that it's not causing issues with, um, you know, the room heating up or anything. I guess if that does start to happen this summer, I'll have to do something different, um, like maybe exhausting the room too. But um, for now, this seems to be working just fine. So uh, let's stop here in the front and we'll go in the back, um, take a look at the backs and then we'll do a little, a little review. All right, so here we are in the back. Um, you can see here's the back side of the cloud plate right here. And I know the light's not great back here, but um, so what we have, um, here it mentioned the probe. So here's the probe. Um, the probe I just leave, you know, laying right on the top with the back part of the um, amp and the AV10 here. You can see the cords going over to it. You know, not a lot of ob obstruction there, so the air flows really well. Um, this is the transformer for it. And this is gonna be the tough part probably, but there's three connectors back here. One for the probe, one for the adapter, power adapter, and then there's another one you can actually link these together. So if you have a scenario where you have a closed rack um, and you want to put an exhaust fan, for instance, at the top, so like this one's pulling the air in and then there's one exhausting the air off the top, you can um, daisy chain these so that um, the fan, the other fan will run off from this one and use this fan settings. And it will make sure that, you know, if this fan kicks on, the other one kicks on too, to have good airflow. So not much back here, but I um, just wanted to show you that in the, th the three settings and just what it looks like. Here's the one, you probably won't be able to see this very well. Here's the one on the uh, amp 10. Same thing, probes just laying back there. I do not have these hooked together. These are independent. They come on independently with, depending on the probe temperature of that device. So there's it, there you go. Not much exciting back here, but that's what it looks like in the back. All right, so now let's do a little bit of overview. I'm gonna start just with the looks. Um, actually, I, I like the way they look. Um, they look, you know, they're really simple and clean. Uh, displays nice, and you can adjust, I didn't mention this before, but you can adjust, you can shut the display off completely, um, and you can adjust the um, brightness of the display as well. Um, but really nice, nice aluminum. The fans are ball bearing fans, so, um, this is one of the things that I was a little surprised about. Um, I read some of the reviews on it, but they, they are fairly loud. Um, so again, even at the, if we just show you here, even at speed one, which is, this is where, again, I don't, mine don't normally go up above one. Um, so like when it comes on at speed one, that's enough to keep it cool, at least again, during the winter, we'll see what it does during the summer. But um, it it's fairly loud louder than I was expecting although it's not it's you know at, when I'm listening to when I'm watching a movie for instance like I don't really even hear them and I'll show you that in a second um I have my uh, own sound pressure level meter here and so what I wanted to show with that see if we can get a good shot of this is right up against these you know you're looking at like 75 just on speed one of course if you move it back you know, so that's it's about a foot away. We're at like 50, 60 probably. 
Um, in a second here, I'll take you over to my main listening position and I'll show you that it doesn't, you can't even really tell, to hear it back there. You know, that again, that's on, that's on speed one, which I never get, I never go above that, but like, if you were to get up to speed six, <laughs> you would definitely be hearing that, I think. Um, so what we're reading about 80, 45 there. And again, a foot away, we're probably at 70. Um, so definitely that would be noticeable um, even at my even even at my main listening position, which as you can see is way back there. So if I come over here, let's start this up. Well, first of all, let's go over the meter. The main listening position here. You can see it's not really reading until I talk. So nothing. And let's go over here. Turn these both up to one. So this is what I'm going to do. Both of them doing the one down here too. So there's both fans running on speed one. Let's go back over here. You can see it picks it up just a tiny bit. Reading about 34, when I don't talk about 34. So again, I with it without any audio playing, you can hear it. But with with a movie going, um, with the movie playing, you know, again, I don't listen to it at reference levels or anything either. But um, with that, get these all set back. Um, at that distance and at the speed, the fan speeds at one, uh, not really noticeable. So I wanted to kind of um, just go over that. You, if if this rack if it was sitting like anywhere near you, your main listening position, I would say you're gonna hear these things even at level one. Um, you know, even with a movie playing at a decent level. So that that's one um, one of the downsides to them, I believe, is their noise. Probably maybe only the only downside. I you know I do I love the looks of them. Like I said, they're functioning perfectly. Once I figured out the smart mode and how the fan speeds interacted with the settings, temperature, and uh, the buffer. Um, once I figured that out, they're they're pretty decent. I, again, I keep saying this now, but I love the looks of them. They match really well with the rest of my rack. So there are other models for this too. I think there's a T1 and a T9. Um, T1 I think is a one rack U with smaller fans. And the T9 it is three rack units instead of two. I think that has four fans as well, but bigger than 80 millimeter. So again, so far so good on these. Um, pretty happy with them. I'm gonna leave, I'll leave a link in the description below. Um, for for these things and where I, I got them on Amazon. And if you have any questions specifically about these, uh, please drop it in the comments and I'll be happy to answer whatever I can. In the meantime, please, uh, as usual, like and subscribe and uh, until the next video, bye.